Look at two teams that are on top of the Big East stands. I know we haven't gotten into Big East play yet, but right now, Butler and DePaul, two teams that were picked to finish on the bottom end of the Big East. Like Butler was picked to finish Crazy. eighth. DePaul was picked to finish last. <laughs> They're, they're undefeated right now. But you know what? When it comes down to it, once we get into Big East play, give me some legit contenders to actually win the Big East this year, okay? So I have four legit contenders right now, okay? So I have Villanova, which is a given, yeah. folks, okay? Mm -hmm. We got to have them in there. Seton Hall is very good defensively, and they have Miles Powell, arguably the best all-around player mm -hmm. uh, in, the big, in uh, the Big East Conference. I have Xavier, who looks good. I like Xavier's big four. They're upperclassmen, uh, and, and they're a tough, grinded team. And then Butler is my surprise team. There's no way you would have talked me into putting Butler as a legitimate contender before this season started. Um, we have already mentioned their turnaround defensively. It reminds me of the turnaround that Marquette had last year mm -hmm. defensively. You remember? Yep, exactly. Marquette finished second in the conference last year. They actually should have won it if, right. if they didn't stumble towards Down the end the of stretch. the year. Yep. And the reason why they finished second is because of their defensive uh, turnaround. I see Butler as that, you know, following that same footprint this year. Yeah, no doubt. And I agree with your four teams. I'd add to Paul as well. Wow. Uh, of course, they have, you know, a long season ahead of them. But if you look early, uh, just in terms of their personnel, Butts and Reed so solid along the baseline. Gage and Charlie Moore out top as guards. And, um, you know, this is a team that's playing with purpose. And Dave Lato's deploying them in a manner to take advantage of their gifts, their abilities in terms of extending the defense, turning teams over as a result, playing at a faster pace, and playing more efficiently both offensively and defensively. So I think this is the deepest the Big East has been since realignment in terms of 1 to 10, a razor-thin margin for error. I think the league champion, who in my view will be Villanova, maybe is 13 and 5, no better than 14 and 4. You're going to take some lumps. You're going to be what I call bloodied but unbowed when you go through the strength of this league top to bottom. There are no gimmies yeah. nope. this year in the Big East. Hey, the Paul is once again one of them surprising, but not to laugh because he picked the Paul to be one of the sleeper yeah. teams coming out of the Big it's East. It's nice yeah. when it occasionally works. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> only the one ball. team can actually win it, though. He said Villanova when it's all said and done. What about you, Casey? I agree, Villanova. And look, there's some Seton Hall fans who are watching right now that want to punch me in the face, and that's okay. Um, I, I would... Um, I know that Seton Hall is a better defensive team as it stands right now, but this Villanova team, Mike, is growing on me every time I watch them. I mentioned Sadiq Bey. I think he's going to have a fantastic breakout sophomore mm -hmm. campaign. He's turning into a star. Colin Gillespie is a guy that you know is going to get a good shot. You can't leave him open from three, so you have to go over on screen and roll. And then Jeremiah Robinson Earl, he's just a freshman, but he plays like an upperclassman, and he plays the right way. Um, and they're just – they always get better, too. Look, Justin they, Moore. Yeah, more Justin comfortable, Moore, yep. putting it on the deck, starting to create, be more aggressive. And as you pointed out, Villanova, the track record of getting better within a season. Is it the track record? Because right now, I mean, like, it was a four-point game last time we checked against St. Joe's. I mean, I know it's a big five game, but I'm saying, you know, Villanova, because of the reputation, we're going to give them the credit. But at the same time, they didn't look great against yeah. Ohio State. They got blown out against Ohio State, and sometimes well, they got this blown season out last year by Michigan. they did. And they lost the pin. They lost the Furman. They lost yes. the Furman at home. You remember this? This, this Villanova team yeah. wasn't super impressive last year, and they still found a way to win the Big East Conference. Now, the the concern I have with Villanova is in their two losses against Baylor and Ohio State, they couldn't keep the ball in front against really athletic teams, and they gave up twenty three-point shots combined in those two losses. It's a problem for them that they can't always defend the really, really athletic elite team. He'll keep tweaking the alchemy. Jay Wright and his staff <laughs> always adjust and modify, make the right changes to allow a team to get better. The track record is basically the last 10 years. Yeah, well, he's won two national championships over the last five years, so I'm going to give Jay Wright his credit. He deserves it.